The Imperial Star Destroyer moved silently through the blackness of space. Its lights dimmed, its huge sublight engines blazing with the urgency of its mission. The man standing on the command walkway could feel the rumble of those engines through his boots as he listened to the muttered conversation from the crew pits below him. The conversation sounded worried too, as worried as he himself felt, though for entirely different reasons. For him, this was a personal matter. The frustration of a professional dealing with fallible beings and the capriciousness of a universe that refused to always live up to one's preconceived notions as to what was fitting and proper. An error had been made. Possibly a very serious error. And as with all errors, there would likely be unpleasant consequences riding in its wake. From the starboard crew pit came a muffled curse, and he stifled a grimace. None of that mattered to the Star Destroyer's crew. Their worries stemmed solely from their performance, and whether they would be facing a pat on the back or a boot in the rear at journey's end. Or possibly they were merely worried about the sublight engines blowing up. On this ship, no one ever knew. He shifted his attention downward, his gaze leaving the grandeur of the starscape and coming to rest on the bow of the Star Destroyer, stretching out more than a kilometer in front of him. He could remember the days when the mere sight of one of these ships would send shivers up the spines of the bravest of fighters and the most arrogant of smugglers. But those days were gone, hopefully forever. The Empire had been rehabilitated, though of course many within the New Republic still refused to believe that. Under Supreme Commander Pelion's firm guidance, the Empire had signed a treaty with the New Republic and was no longer any more threatening than the Bothans or the corporate sector or anyone else. Almost unwillingly, he smiled as he gazed along the Star Destroyer's long prow. Of course, even in the old days of the Empire, this particular ship would probably have inspired more bewilderment than fear. It was, after all, hard to take a bright red Star Destroyer very seriously. From behind him, audible even over the rumble of the engines, came the sound of clumping boots. Okay, card! Booster Tarek grunted as he came to a halt at his side. The comm's finally fixed. You can transmit whenever you want. Thank you, Talencard said, turning back toward the crew pits and trying hard not to blame Booster for the state his equipment was in. An Imperial Star Destroyer was a huge amount of ship to take care of, and Booster never had nearly enough personnel to do the right job. Is he she? He called. Go. Yes, Chieftain, the Tagorian called back from the comm board, her fur fluffing slightly as her clawed fingers touched the keys. Transmission complete. Shall I begin alerting the rest of the network now? Yes, Card said. Thank you. Hisishi nodded and returned her attention to the board. With that, Card knew. He'd done all he could for the moment. Turning again to face the stars, he folded his arms across his chest and tried hard to cultivate his patience. It'll be all right, Booster murmured from beside him. We'll be around this star in half an hour and be able to jump to light speed. We can be in the Domgrin system in two standard days, tops. Assuming the hyperdrive doesn't break down again. Card waved a hand. Sorry. I'm just... You understand. Sure, Booster said. But relax, all right? 
This is Luke and Mara we're talking about, not some fresh-hatched Nymoidian grubs. Whatever's going on, they're not going to be caught flat-footed. Maybe, Card said. Though even Jedi can be surprised. He shook his head. But that's not the point, is it? The point is that I messed up. I don't like it when that happens. Booster shrugged his massive shoulders. Like any of the rest of us do? He asked pointedly. You have to face the facts, Card. And fact number one is that you simply can't know everyone who works for you anymore. Card glared out at the mockingly cheerful red ship stretched out in front of him. But Booster was right. This whole thing had gotten completely out of hand. He'd started out modestly enough, merely offering to provide timely information to the leaders of the New Republic and Empire so that both sides could be assured that the other wasn't plotting against them. And for the first couple of years, everything had gone just fine. The trouble had come when the various planetary and sector governments within the New Republic had woken up to the benefits of this handy service and decided they wanted a board too. After the near civil war that had broken out over the Ka'amas document, Card hadn't really felt like turning them down. And with permission from his clients on Coruscant and Bastion, he'd gone ahead and expanded his operations. Which naturally meant expanding his personnel as well. In retrospect, he supposed, it had only been a matter of time before something like this happened. He just wished it hadn't happened to Luke and Mara. Maybe not, he told Booster. But even if I can't handle everything personally, it's still my responsibility. Ah, Booster said knowingly. So it's your pride that's hurt, is it? <laughs> Card eyed his old friend. Tell me, Booster, has anyone ever told you you're truly irritating when you try to be sympathetic? Yeah, the subjects come up once or twice, Booster said, grinning. He slapped Card's back. Come on! Let's go down to the Transis Corridor, and I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> Assuming the drink dispensers are working today, Card murmured as they headed back along the command walkway. Well, yeah, Booster conceded. Always assuming that. 